Do you have a wood or laminate floorboard in the dead center of your floor that's damaged? Taking your whole floor apart's not an option? Well, you're going to want to watch this. Today on Jones Knows, we replace a single board. It's so beautiful, you and me. We meant to be. Well, the first thing we need to do is get this crack board out. This is a brand new floor, and we have a manufactured defect here in the dead center of the room. So taking a floor apart is not an option. We're going to use an oscillating saw and cut one line down the length of the board and then cut lines across the board. Now by cutting these lines across the board I now have a small section that I can take out and once I get this piece out everything gets a lot easier. We're going to use a hammer and chisel to get the piece that we cut out. Now look, we had uh, not cut through all the way, so we had to get the oscillating saw out again. And now once we get that one piece out, we use the hammer to slide the board down out of the end joint and then lift it up with the uh, pry bar. Then we'll use the oscillating saw again to cut across the other side take another small section out. By taking this small section out, then I'm able to slide the board down towards the other end. Uh, with that piece in, I can't slide it down uh, and get the end joint out. Now, the key to a successful board removal is going to be not to damage any of the boards around you. Um, I've been doing this for 20 years, and I've removed probably thousands of boards, and I can tell you, you don't want to create any more work for yourself by damaging the surrounding boards. So take your time and slowly remove sections of the board so you get it all out nice and clean. I say clean because you can't leave any broken edges or any pieces that will get in your way when we put the new board in. Now that we have the board out, it's time to prepare the new board that we're going to put in. First thing we need to do is make sure we get the right length board. Uh, we're doing real wood here, or engineered wood, so these boards can vary by as much as an inch to uh, two to three inches in length on the long boards. So you, you want to make sure it's exactly the right length. Then you're going to want to have a table saw with a good fence. So I'm going to draw a line where we want to cut along the back of this board so you can see that we need to remove the entire bottom of the groove side. Now you notice I set my fence and I want to test just a small section of the board to make sure that we're cutting in the right place. I took it off the saw, saw where the blade went through, I know it's in the right place. So now we'll want to remove the entire bottom of the groove. Run it all the way through the saw along the fence. And you want to make sure that you cut it flush. There's no bottom of that groove left anywhere because it will get in the way when we go to put this board in. Now we have the end joint. We have the groove on one end of the board that we need to do the same thing that we did on the long plank. On the long part of the plank, I should say. So there we go. Now we have all the bottoms of the grooves off. Now this next step is very important. This is a little trick that I do. A lot of people don't do this. Um, on the tongue end, you need to take off a good half an inch to three quarters of an inch on each side of the tongue. This is going to help you get that board back into the floor. I want to leave that tongue on when I put the uh, the plank into the floor because that's going to help me hold that end flush. So you don't want to take the whole tongue off, but you need to take parts of it off so you're able to get it in. It's going to make sense when you see us put this board in. So there's the board. It's prepared. Now we're going to want to put... I'm going to use a construction adhesive as well as a Loctite along the tongue. So now we're going to put the plank in. Here's the trick. You're going to put the long joint in. On a slight angle, you're going to put it in and work the end tongue in the far end of the board. So you see with the mallet, we're going to tap that end tongue in once it's in far enough, then we can put the rest of the long tongue in. I'm using a rubber mallet. Don't use a real hammer. You're going to damage the board. Slowly work it in. 
As long as you've cut all the bottom of that groove off, this should slowly drop in. Be patient. Use your rubber mallet. If you need a little extra help, use a scrap piece of flooring. Use that as your tapping block. Don't use a real tapping block. You could damage the edge of the board. And slowly, this board should drop into place. Patience is a virtue and a necessity when we're doing an intricate repair like this. And there she goes. She's in. Now if you want, you can put a couple nails, a couple brad nails to hold it down, but it's not necessary. Finished result, you can't you should not be able to tell where this board was. It's perfect. And that's how we do it at Jones Nose. Would you like to learn how to do quarter round and trim molding in minutes instead of hours without a saw? Then take out your favorite floor and mallet and smash that subscribe button so as not to miss our next video. It's so beautiful, you and me. We meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free.